here today is from East Point College Park area, born and raised. And he has a very triumphant story that he wants to share with you that is not about any particular sport. It's not about anything other than the tools that you all need to be successful. So it is my honor to introduce a Bulldog, the ultimate success story. The ultimate success story, someone who loves each and everything about Tri-Cities High School, and they love it because of their actions. How many of you all feel like people don't genuinely believe in us, us being the school? You all are absolutely right by putting your hand up. And those that did not, you will learn at a certain point that you are coming from what people outside of this great school consider to be a dark place. But there's nothing dark about Tri-Cities. And the opportunity that you all have coming from a place that people consider to be dark is to shine brighter than everybody else who wants to be successful. The gentleman that's gonna be coming up here had the ultimate success, the ultimate challenges, and has been able to overcome everything. It is my pleasure and my honor to introduce one of Tri-City's most successful graduates. First with a video. <laughs> life that I'm gonna give you guys. It's gonna come with a lot of pain, a lot of tears, a lot of hurt, a lot of joy. Most important, a lot of different emotions. A lot of bounce back, a lot of feedback. My nickname is Fuzzy. Everybody know me as Fuzzy. In the, in the business world, they know me as Swain. I went to Tri-City High School, graduated class in 2000, 3.5 GPA, scored over a thousand on the SAT, was one of the top 50 basketball players in the country. We won many games in Tri-City, Final Four Elite Eight, really well known throughout the state of Georgia, throughout my hood, East Point, Washington Road. Went on, went on to play college basketball at the University of Connecticut. At the University of Connecticut, uh, I had an opportunity. I played with uh, five first-round NBA draft picks. So coming out of East Point, my goal was to get my family out of the hood. Played with the best players going to college. Building relationships. One man telling, let's go hard, let's go hard for all I know. Working hard, training hard, being a respectful player, respecting my coaches, outworking my teammates, doing what I had to do to keep that goal, to get my family out of the hood. Ended up graduating in college in 2005, went to play professional ball in Europe. Played in France, Spain, Lithuania, and Russia. During that time, I met a lot of people along the way. A lot of friends, a lot of enemies, but at the most part, 
It was a great experience for me. Came down to uh, 2010. I had just signed my biggest contract to get ready to go back to Europe. Came home, riding in the hood, ran to some, you know, a lot of boys that I went to school with. They were doing their thing in the streets. Uh, I was approached with an opportunity to go move over 100 kilos of cocaine. I decided that I would engage in that type of activity. I'm going to give you the rundown of how everything went down. It was a Friday morning. I met with four of my so-called, so-called homeboy. We meet in, we meet in uh, Gwinnett County. We walk up the five unmarked Cadillac truck tenant wonders. Y'all call them Migos. Oh, I'm going to see my plug. I'm going to see my plug. So we park. We walk in the warehouse. We come out with about, about 40 keys of cocaine. I got the drug, put them in the car. We ride in the car. I'm talking to the guy, which y'all know him as Migo. Oh, here, Migo, here, plug. I'm riding in the car with him. He telling me, yeah, man, we're going to make millions. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. You need to come on out to Texas. We really get it out there in Texas, man. We can ship it back. We can mail it back in the mail. Hey, come on, Swain. We can do this and do that. Wow. I was already making money playing basketball the correct way, using the gift that God gave me. But then I turned into a dealer. I fell in love with something that didn't have a heart and that didn't love me back. And that was money. Right after the drop off, we drop off the door. About two days later, my phone started ringing. I answered the phone, hello, hello? Ain't nobody saying that. I instantly started sweating. I said, damn. Phone ring again. Hello, hello? <clears throat> Ain't nobody saying that. About two days later, mind you, I'm getting ready to go back to Europe. About two days later, I'm leaving my house to go to the gym to work out to get in preparation to go back to Europe and play basketball. I leave my house about 5.30 a.m. As I leave here to the gym, I'm looking at my wonder. It's an unmarked car following me. So I said, man, why that car follow me? So I did, a, I did an unusual turn headed to the gym. But the car didn't go that way. I said, cool, okay, cool. So I get in the gym, I work out for about an hour and 30 minutes. Once I get in the gym, I'm heading out the gym. So as I walk out the gym, this is where the parking lot is. This is the back of the gym. Parking lot on this side, parking lot to my right. As I walk out the gym, I see 10 federal agents running at me with pumps, machine guns. Free, lay down, lay down, free. I'm still standing. I look to my left, and 10 more come. Get out, get out, woo -hoo. Calling me everything but a man of God. I look to the right, fire agent coming from behind me. I look up top, like fire coming out the roof. They let me down on the ground. Get down, get down, get down! Hands up, hands up! If you move, we're gonna pull your brains up! You move, we're gonna pull your brains up! Oh man. At this time, at this time, life is a slow motion for me. My whole life slowed down. Whole life slowed down. They asked me, where the gun, where the drug? I told them I had the money in the car. I had the guns in the car. All my guns were legal, but the money was the only thing that went legal. They took all of it out of the car. They called my family. Told them I had just been arrested and charged with four counts to distribute 20 keys of cocaine. <sighs> That's an automatic life sentence. That's an automatic life sentence. They take me down to the headquarters. 
as we ride on the highway, I know in my mind that the cars are going 85 miles per hour, but through my eyes, the car was going like 10 miles per hour. And I say that because my whole life had slowed down. Everything that I had worked hard for, everything that I wanted to do for my family, my kids, it, it wasn't no turn back. So they locked me up. I was locked up for, I was locked up for one day. I made one. <laughs> Get out. I had to start fighting for my life. A couple of weeks later, I had got a letter in the mail. Said my court date would be next year or August. I don't know y'all familiar with the white tongue, same lawyer T I had. I called the white as soon as I got out. I said, hey the white. I said, man, I've been charged with four counts and stripped 20 keys of cocaine. He told me you're gonna have to pay me $150,000. I said, what? He said, you gotta pay me $150,000. I said, man, are you serious, man? He said, hey, man, listen to me. They just sent Michael Vick to jail, and he was fighting dog. You were charged with four counts of strip, 20 keys of cocaine. What you think they gonna do to you? I said, say no more. That Tuesday morning, I showed up to the white offer with $149,000 cash. He put the money in the money machine. He came up to 149000 He said, hey man, get out of my office. Yo, man, extra thousand. He didn't take my cake. The next day I brought him the extra thousand. He took my cake. So through the whole trial, through the whole tribulation, through the whole trial, they folks telling me, the less we gonna give you is 15 years. You have to plead to that. In my mind, I see my life flash before my eyes. At the time, at the time I was 29 years old, or at the time I was 30, they wanted me to plead for 15 years. A whole year go by, we dealing with the case, case going up and down, it's looking good, it ain't looking good. As I go through the process, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, and hoping and wishing. I laid around the house, I slept for like two months straight. Went eat, couldn't eat. Came down to October the 6th, 2012. I'm at the court, they walk in the court. Judge say, they introduced me as I walk in. They, you know, they was real sweet, real nice to me. Walk in, they tell me, uh, Miss Swain, come to the stand. They read my charges out to me. I ain't no taking a plea deal. Had a lot of great people come speak on my behalf. As I went up, I went and talked. Can't folk went and talk. You know, everybody crying, please don't send him to jail. Please don't do this. Please don't do that. Judge told me, Mr. Swain, I hear you coming up here crying. You, I hear everybody coming up here speaking on your behalf. I don't care nothing about all that. You can put drugs back in my two community. I said, yes, sir, you know. He said, with that being said, I'm gonna send you to 25 months in federal prison. All right, now you know, I had a report that was October 6th, I had to report to prison October 12th. When I had to report to prison, that was one of the toughest things I had to do in my life. The night before, I couldn't sleep. Crying, doing a lot of thinking. I had never did no prison time. I knew a lot of folk that did prison time, but I ain't never did. So I didn't know how I pulled to go. Who know where McDonald's Boulevard at? Tomville, four season. Oh, yeah. yeah, that that way. So I go check in. I go check in the prison. I walk in. 
Had on some nice joy. Had on some short. Had on t-shirt. Before I say take that off. Get naked. As I check in, I'm sitting in prison. As I sit in, I'm sitting in prison. I'm sitting in jail. It's about a wall about the cell about this being from here to about here. Bunk bed, bunk bed, and a toilet. So when they put me in the cell, I'm in there with a dude that just caught 20 years, tattoos all in their face. You would have thought he was a real gangster. He ended up crying. I'm walking, I'm looking crazy because I'm stunned. He ended up crying. I said, man, what's wrong with you, man? He said, they had to put me in the hole, man, because they kept trying to do that to me while I'm in there. I said, man, but you a gangster, ain't you, man? He crying. So as time go on, time go on, as I sit in, the type of meals I was eating, man. They got a door, little peephole about that big. They slide my food through the, through the door like I'm some kind of dog, like some kind of animal. They slide my food through the door. So as I see the food coming, I'm like, what that is? You know, they tell me what's going on. Did my, did my first, second day there on my plate. We got pinto bean, man. Pinto bean about this serving, this amount of serving. Piece of cornbread about this big. Cup of water. About that big right there. And they, and they expect us to eat that. I didn't eat. I didn't eat for 21 days. After that 21 day, they sent me to the yard. I got a chance to go on the yard. On the yard, you get to work out every day. Just get to be outside. You get to see the leaves. You get to see the trees. I start to gain appreciation for, 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 for things that didn't have a price. And some of those things allowed me and gave me strength. So as I was sitting in the cell, man, I didn't know what time of day it was. I didn't know if it was cold. I didn't know if it was hot. I didn't know the time of the day because everything dark. So when I, got, when I did get in population, I started saying to myself, you know, what I'm going to do? Am I going to let myself die? Am I going to drown? What am I going to do? So I came up with free. I got to own my mom by any means necessary. Because that moment, all I had, it was sometimes I wanted to kill myself in them. But because I strengthened my mind mentally, I got intact with my emotions, I tapped into who I was. Started doing push-ups, pull-ups, working out every day. I started eating that dog food. It made me mean, made me hungry, made me ambitious. So as time went on, time went on. As a month go by, I'm walking off my calendar, I'm walking off my calendar. There were some guys that I had to do 20, 15 calendars. I only had to do two calendars, but I learned. So as I went on, I was working out on the yard, I'm training other inmates in basketball. You know, God had gave me a gift of training inmates in basketball. I'm getting a lot of insight from them, like, oh man, I wish I would've knew you when I was coming up. If I would've knew you when I was coming up, I could've did this, or I could've did that. It wasn't so much about the basketball, but it was more about the mindset and the mentality. So as I started training, as I started getting a lot of good feedback from a lot of the other inmates that I was locked down with, I came up with a business plan while I was in prison. And it was called Swain Basketball Academy. So from that day forward, I locked in. I started doing a business plan. I started educating myself. I started taking money classes. I started taking business courses. I started, I took a class, it was called branding. Now, none of this stuff I would have got in the free world because life moving so fast, but because my life had a chance to stop, I was able to do these types of things. So I took a class called branding. And understand, each and every one of y'all have a brand. You got a brand. How you market yourself? How you gonna start marketing yourself? You have a brand. You are a brand. If you don't believe in you, how do you expect your teachers and your coaches and your parents to believe in you? You understand me? So as time went on, time went on. I'm grinding, I'm grinding. Give me a bit play. I'm still doing what I'm doing. A lot of, lot of, lot of pretty stuff going on, man. Y'all you, you, know the deal. I ain't even got to tell you, but just know it real. Uh, so, I get down to like, 
I get down to like my last, my last, my, my last two months. I'm sleep. I'm sleeping my bunk. And as I sleep, and I hope y'all really feel me on this. I hope y'all really, really, really listen to me on this when I tell you this. As I'm sleep, a voice come to me. Do you understand me? As I'm sleep, a voice come to me. And this voice tell me, hey, I know your release date is July 27th, 2014. He came to me on January the 16th, 2014. The Spirit of God came to me. I had an opportunity to speak with God one on one. God came to me and told me, listen, you're going to be out of prison in five months, July the 27th, 2014. There's going to be a lot of folk that sleep on you. There's going to be a lot of folk that, that can't stand you. They're going to turn their back on you. But I got unlimited credit. You're going to be able to do any and everything you want to do. It's going to be in my name, which is God. And I'm just going to be his servant. So throughout that course, I get down to like the last 30 days of prison. As I get ready to get out, I head down to the airport. My agents had been negotiating me a deal to go back to Europe to play. As I get the custom, police will come rushing me again. Say, no, Mr. Swain, you're not going nowhere. You're not allowed to leave the state of Georgia. You're on federal probation. Mm. I dropped on my knees again. Them same tears that made me strong, they made me weak. But I was used to the ups and downs and the pitfalls and the mindset that I had to have to get where I was trying to get. Mind you, I got five kids, y'all. I got five kids. How my kids gonna eat? I had seen them in two years. When I get home, I grass this high. Lost my cars, lost everything. Mind you, I pulled to have friends. Nobody was there. Nobody was there. I was walking down the street. I seen a dude. They were doing construction work. And I walk up to him. I said, hey man, y'all hire me. He told me, you know how to do construction work? I said, man, I don't care what it is. I just came home from the feed, man. I need a job. I got five kids, man. He said, cool. They started me off with about $9 an hour. <laughs> that was a whole bunch that I would make in prison. I would get $20 a month, working eight hours a day. $20 a month. The federal government used it. I started doing the construction work. They started me out with nine dollars. Two weeks later, they were paying me nineteen dollars an hour. I was on a mission. I wasn't gonna be denied. Every time I got paid, I went and bought me a basketball. I did construction work for ninety days. When you look at me now, you probably don't even look like I ever did construction work. I did it for ninety days. I started Swain Basketball Academy with only two kids for seven, for 18 months I had two kids. People telling me, oh man, you crazy, man, what you doing, what you doing, you ain't making no money, that ain't gonna make no money. I stayed down, I believed in what God gave me, I believed in what God told me. Right now today, I've trained over 2,500 kids in my program, now I got over 250 kids. Appreciate it. My, my whole, my whole, my whole mindset is do not let one person, a man, dictate your abilities, girl or boy. You got to believe in yourself when all else fail. You gotta believe in yourself. Take control of your own destiny. I'm gonna share something with y'all. And I really want y'all to really take heed of this. The federal government right now know in 2035 
How many of y'all gonna be in that same cell I was in? Y'all think I'm just talking. Y'all think I'm just talking. They know how many of y'all gonna be. See, you only one mistake away from going to the federal penitentiary. You only one mistake away. So I'm not gonna be cliche and say, be all you can be. You can be a president. You can be anything you wanna be. Yeah, you can. But it's gonna become a lot of trials and tribulations to what you're trying to accomplish. There's gonna be some ups and downs, there's gonna be some pitfalls. There's gonna be some times you're gonna wanna give up, but you gotta dig deeper. There's gonna be some times you're gonna be slept on, but you gotta dig deeper. There's gonna be a lot of people say, oh, he can't do this, she can't do that. If you listen to him, you're gonna be a victim of But if you know who you is in your heart, you gonna own your bone. My last thing, last thing. I want y'all to take this opportunity today because you're not gonna get it raw like this. You're not gonna get it raw nowhere else like this. Control what you can control. Don't be manipulated by what look good, what smell good. All of those things are intangible. It has no value whatsoever. Let me say that again. Don't fall in love with the things that you see, the cars, the house. Don't fall in love with that. The pretty women, the handsome men, it has no value. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. got it? Yeah. Appreciate y'all, baby.